coming on the heels of the release of On One Photo Raw 2024.5, which comes with a retooled AI object masking, I thought it would be helpful to compare On One's masking with similar object masking tools from competing RAW editors, Luminar Neo, and Capture One, to see how it stacks up. Make sure to stick around till the end as I'll be providing an analysis on the comparison's results. First, why these RAW editors? These editors were chosen because they all have similar point-and-click operations, which were all recently introduced in the past few months. Next, let's take a look at the current prices of each editor to give us a reference point when determining overall value. As of this writing, Luminar Neo is on discount, costing $85 for a perpetual license. On One Photo Raw 2024.5 is also on discount and costs $50 for a perpetual license. Finally, Capture One is not on discount and costs the same as it always has, $299 for a perpetual license. For the first test, I'll mask various elements of the portrait, the face, hair, teeth, lips, and background to see how the AI masking tool performs. Let's start off with Luminar Neo and its object select tool. I'll start off with the face. I'll increase the exposure. Next, I'll mask the hair. Unfortunately, as you can see here, Luminar's AI isn't discerning enough to limit the mask to just the hair or any part of the face for that matter. As such, I'll move on to the background. I'll lower the exposure. Next, let's move on to on one. I'll mask the face. As you can see, pointing and clicking isn't doing a precise enough job. No problem, I'll increase precision by dragging over the face. There, a better selection. I'll increase the brightness. By the way, I incorrectly stated in my last video that you could not remove from the mask via Super Select AI. I'm happy to report that I was wrong. You actually can. Simply press the Alt or Option key while selecting to remove from the mask. Thanks to one of our viewers who pointed out this oversight. By the way, the Erase button, which you think would do that job, doesn't, so don't use it for erasing. This is one confusing aspect that I hope On One fixes. Next, I'll brighten the hair. I'll brighten the teeth. I'll saturate the lips. Finally, I'll reduce the exposure on the background. So it seems On One passed this test with flying colors. Let's move on to Capture One. Similar to On One, I'll brighten the face. By the way, with Capture One, you can remove from the mask by using the AI Eraser tool. There, the mask is removed. Next, I'll brighten the hair. I'll brighten the teeth. I'll saturate the lips. So Capture One passes this test with flying colors as well. Let's move on to the next image. Once again, I'll start with Luminar Neo. I'll increase the exposure of the tree. As you can see, the AI is not able to create a well-fitting mask on this admittedly difficult subject, which has a lot of complicated edges. Unfortunately though, Luminar only offers a brush to refine the mask, and this would be an error-prone solution. Next, I'll brighten the boat and lower the brightness of the sky. So that is Luminar Neo. While its object selection tool was able to mask all the objects properly, its lack of tools for refining edges limits its usability. Next, let's move on to On One. I'll brighten the tree. Just like Luminar Neo, 
on one was enabled to mask with precision. However, better than Luminar Neo, on one has a tool to mitigate this problem called the refined brush. Let's use it now. As you can see, a better result. Next, let's brighten the boat. Finally, let's lower the brightness of the sky. So that was on one. As you can see, its refined brush goes a long way to help mask complicated edges. Let's move on to capture one. I'll brighten the tree. Just like the previous two, Capture One is also unable to mask perfectly. Unlike On One though, which requires manual brushing, Capture One has a refined mask tool that can help mitigate the problem. Let's use that now. There, an improved result. Capture One also allows for refining the mask via a luminosity tool, which might give better results, as you can see here. Next, let's move on to this image. For this task, let's see if Luminar can mask each part of the person and the ship in the background. I'll start with the person. As you can see, Luminar masked everything successfully. Next, let's mask the ship. Luminar did a good job in that as well. However, if there's one thing that could be improved with Luminar's mask, in my opinion, it could use a little bit more feathering to make the adjustment look more natural. Next, let's move on to On One. I'll mask the person. As you can see, On One did a great job with this task. Next, I'll mask the ship. A pretty good result as well. Compared to Luminar, On One's adjustment does not exhibit ugly artifacts, perhaps because the mask fits better or because of better feathering. Next, let's move on to Capture One. Once again, I'll mask the person. I'll mask the ship. Just like with On One, Capture One had no issues masking these objects. So that is the comparison. What conclusion can we derive from this exercise? For Luminar Neo, as I mentioned in my previous review, its object select tool is a big improvement over Mask AI, its previous AI implementation. That being said, Luminar Neo urgently needs to deliver a tool that can refine masks for complicated edges like hair, fur, or trees. Without this tool, the current object select tool is for the most part crippled when dealing with those object types. How about Capture One? The good news for Capture One is this demonstration reaffirms yet again what we've known all along, that it has best-in-class object masking. It differentiates itself by having two methods of mask refinement, Refine Mask and Luma Range, which work great for complicated subjects. That's the good news. The bad news is it has now more competition for the best masking in a raw editor title. And that brings us to On One Photo Raw 2024.5. In my view, it is the biggest winner in the comparison. Compared to Capture One, which, as a reminder, is currently priced six times higher than On One, I saw no perceivable difference in both the operation and performance compared to Capture One's tool. It was practically a carbon copy. That's a solid achievement for On One. It's useful to remember that only a few raw editors have any AI object selection to speak of at all. Affinity Photo, Photomator, DxO Photo Lab all don't have such a tool, never mind a good one, which gives you an idea how hard this technology must be to implement. So On One must have really beefed up its AI capability in the past year, as this is the third AI-related release, which is of a high quality, following Brilliance AI and No Noise AI. This only bodes well for its future. 
I'll be certainly watching what comes next when On One Photo Raw 2025 is released later this year. Also, the results to my mind mean one of two things. Either Capture One now looks very overpriced or On One is incredibly underpriced. But what do you think? So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know any thoughts you have in the comparison. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.